class. We're going to get you started here with VCorp today. Uh, you should be following along with this video uh, at your own pace, uh, throw in the earbuds, follow along, pause it, uh, and I would work along with the video. That's going to be the easiest way to get this done. Okay. So what our objective is, we're going to use VCarve Pro. We've got to learn how to open it. We need to learn how to create a job in VCarve. Uh, we need to learn how to draw in VCarve. And then we need to learn how to toolpath in VCarve. Uh, and we're going to do this uh, for parts B and C of your clock. All right. You've drawn them so you have a good understanding of what they are. Uh, well, we need to create them so that we can cut them on a CNC machine. Um, so we have them for our clock assembly. All right. So here we go. Let's get started. Uh, you should be following along with me here. I'm going to come up to my search. Uh, and if you guys just type in VCarve, here's the program. It's running on your computer. Um, all you need to do is double click it to launch it. Uh, and this is what's going to pop up. Okay, from VCarve Pro, I'm going to move my little picture out of the way. And what I want to do is I want to create a new file. Okay, so you're watching my cursor. Here we are, create a new file. And when we begin in VCarve, this is really, really important. Uh, it works on coordinates, X, Y, Z, okay? And here's what we wanna punch in. I want a X, this is gonna be my left and right, okay? I want this to be 16 inches in length. We want our height to be six inches. So I'm gonna change that to six, and my thickness needs to be a half inch. All right, because that's how uh, how thick, if you look at our, our bill of materials, uh, how thick B's and C's are, okay? So X is 16, Y is 6, Z is 5. Go ahead and punch them in. Uh, mine are already somewhat uh, in that order. Uh, you guys might need to change them. Just type in there what they need to be. Um, reference your zero position. It should be uh, the front left surface material, okay? And your datum also front left. Uh, you can click to change that. Uh, we want it to be front left. After you have that done, hit OK. This is what your VCarve board will look like. This is what we're going to design on. This is where we're going to draw our B's and C's, but we needed to create how big our board is. And we went 16 by 6 with a thickness of a half inch. Okay. So what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna teach you how to draw out our parts B and C um, using VCarve Pro and using the Create Vectors toolpaths right here. So using our Create Vectors, we're gonna draw out our parts, all right? And all these dimensions, guys, um, can be referenced in your shop drawings, which you have, okay? So B's and C's, real simple, they're a rectangle, okay? So I'm gonna take my rectangle tool and when I click on my rectangle tool, notice it brings up um, a size down here in the bottom left. So all I need to do is punch in what my width and what my height is, okay? So pretty simple here. Um, my width is gonna be my X coordinate and that's gonna be my left to right, all right? Six and seven eighths um, is what uh, our, our drawing is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and punch in 6.875. And my height, I'm gonna do my C's first. They are an inch and a half, okay? So I'm talking about my width, left to right measurement, six and seven eighths. And my height is gonna be uh, how wide my part is here. Um, I know it's a little confusing. Okay, so when we think about our X coordinate, let's think about length from our, our bill of materials. And when I think about height, uh, how wide is my part? So C's here are uh, an inch and a half. So 1.5, and I'm gonna go ahead and create that vector. When I hit create, there's my part right there. Notice I might be zoomed in. So all I did is just zoom out a little bit using my scroll button on my mouse, and there is my part right there, okay? So I could go ahead and close this for right now. There's my part, I need to get it down onto my board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my edit objects and I'm going to move. So when I select that tool and I click on my part that I created, I get all these little nodes. And if I click and hold on the center, I can go ahead and drag this and place this where I want, okay? We need two of these. 
Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go control C, control V. And I now have two parts created. All right. I'm going to give it a little spacing between them. I just use my arrow keys to do that and I'm fine. All right. Notice I got a third one up here. I'm just going to delete that. So I select it, hit my delete key. Um, that'll get rid of an object. So two C's. I need to create a B. So I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to click on the rectangle function. My width is going to be the same, or I should say length in this case, my left to right measurement. Um, height or width of our um, B's now are three quarters. All right. So I'm going to type 0.75. Hit create, there's that part. I'm gonna go ahead and close, move tool, select my part, click and hold, give myself a little room left to right here, place that on my board. I'm going to control C, control V, and then I'm just using my arrow keys here to drop that down, copy, paste, and create a third one. And now I have B's and C's, the only thing I need to add to this are my rabbits that go on the ends. So to make my rabbits that go on the ends of my B's and C's, it's really simple to do. Uh, the first thing I want to make sure of, though, is that my parts are exactly lined up. And here's what I mean. If I select one and just use my arrow keys and I zoom really, really close here, notice my left to right, I want to make sure that they are exactly in line, okay? Okay. And then I'm going to give a little space. Use your board and make sure you're at least a half inch from an edge. Okay. And give yourself at least three quarters of an inch in between. So I got plenty of room there. Uh, so if I zoom in here, this space is good for my first B. And because I copied and pasted it and then just use my arrow keys, I know that these are all in line. But you can check yours just to double check, make sure. And I'm just going to space these out. Something just like that. Okay. Now, using my scroll key, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And now I need to create my uh, rabbits. So a rabbit here uh, is no different than a rectangle. Okay. I'm just going to change the position of it. And I'm going to change uh, the width of it. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool for a third time. And now my width, my left to right, I want these to come in a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to change this to 0.25. Okay. So there it is, 0.25. I made my board six inches. Okay. I want to have these run the full uh, height of what my board is. So I'm going to change these to six. I'm going to hit create. And there it is. You can see it. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go to my move tool. I'm going to select this. Might have to zoom out so I can grab that center node and I'm going to drag it down here. Now, I'm going to zoom right in on this. And here's what I want to do. This outside edge right here is very important. I want that edge to line up with my part edge. Okay. So all I'm going to do is use my arrow keys and there it is. I've lined that up and it's running the full length of my board. I'm not worried about the overrun. Okay. I let it run wild. That is fine. So now I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that. Move it over here to the left side, or to the right side, sorry. I'm going to zoom in. Zoom way in and make sure that it's perfectly placed. I like that. So while I'm zoomed in, I'm going to copy this one, Control C it, Control V, it's going to paste it right on top. Use my arrow keys, and I'm just going to move this over. And I can see my part edge right here of my B. So I'm gonna work smarter, not harder. I'm gonna go ahead and place that. Now I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, again, it's coming onto my part a quarter of an inch, and that's what I want. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna copy and paste again. And I'm gonna place my last rabbit Eventually, it'll be a rabbit on top of my last bee. And this is what it should look like. Okay. Now, at this point, it's a good time to save. So we're going to go up under File, 
save as. I like to have uh, on my desktop a VCAR folder, and that's what you're looking into right now. All right, so you can easily go to your desktop and you can right click, create a new folder, call it VCARV, and then that way you can uh, be organized. And I'm going to um, name this um, B and C uh, mod two. You could call it B and C your first name, that would be fine. Um, I'm just gonna use B and C mod two because that's the class I'm using it for. You can see I have mod one up there. Okay, save. So there's that V carve, uh, uh, that part is saved. The last thing that I need to do as far as drawing is I need to create an arc, all right? I need to create an arc for my C. If you look off your bill of materials uh, or off your uh, shop drawings, uh, RC has a little bit of um, an arch to it. So I'm gonna show you how to draw that arch. So making our arch is pretty simple here. I'm gonna use a couple tools. I'm gonna use my line tool. I'm gonna use my arch tool. Uh, I'm going to use the join vector, and then I'm going to use the trim, all right? So here we go, pretty simple. Let's start with my line tool. I'm going to use uh, my line tool to create some simple lines just to draw and just for layout purposes. So I'm going to start uh, on this seat. This is the one I'm choosing. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to click here one time. I'm going to protrude this line out in this direction. I want to make this one inch, or just like SketchUp, one inch enter. And then I'm going to come 90 degrees down to pass my part. And I'm going to click one time, hit escape, and there is that line. And again, this is just for layout purposes. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Come to my line tool. I'm going to click, get it going in the direction I want, one inch. Come on down, click, hit escape. And at this point now, I have two of these lines. And again, they are just for layout reasons. That's it. I'm just using them for layout, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I am now going to draw my arc. I'm going to take my arc, and I want to uh, through three point. So my first point is going to be right here, second point here, and now my third point is going to give me the arc that I create, okay? Notice, I do not want to make my part very skinny. Notice, that would break. I don't want to exceed my halfway point. So halfway is roughly right here. And I want it to be in the center. And notice I get that dotted line. That dotted line is indicating that I'm in the center of my part. Okay. So create the arc that you want. Do not go above halfway on your part. I'm going to go somewhere right there. So I'm going to click. And I now can close this window. And I can deselect. And you can see I have uh, my arc that is drawn. At this point, I'm going to get rid of my layout lines. I don't need these anymore. These little lines that I drew, they were just so I can get my arc. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create, select the profile of my seat, and I'm also going to uh, select my arc. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these vectors right here. I'm going to select join. Once they're joined, I'm going to deselect. I'm going to take my trim tool, and I'm going to trim the bottom of my seat. So all that I have remaining is my arc. And again, your arc only needs to be on one uh, C, okay? Again, this is aesthetic. Just make sure this point here is not less than half the width of your arc, okay? Um, and once you get all this drawn, all we got left to do is do some tool pads. So making tool pads uh, for our drawing is pretty simple. We got two different tool pads that we're going to be drawing here, and I'm going to walk you through both of them. So VCarve here is, is a pretty interesting program. So on the left-hand side, that is where we create. So we're shifting gears. We got what we wanted. We created everything. So now we got to go and we got a tool path. So on the right-hand side, you're going to see it's kind of hidden. Um, there's a little tool path. Click on that, and it opens up this whole new screen. What I like to do is pin this out so that way it doesn't disappear on me, Okay. So just like before, we just need to select what we want the program to do for us, all right? So right now, I want to create what is called a profile. I want to cut out the profile of my Bs, and I want to cut out the profile of my Cs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of those parts that I want to cut out. So profile C there. I'm going to select my second one and holding my shift key down. 
select both of those, go to my B, and I have all my profiles, three Bs, two Cs, and now I'm going to select the action, profile toolpath. So here is where we program our CNC machine to do exactly what, what we want it to do. Um, it knows nothing. We need to tell it everything. All right. So each one of these little areas, we need to punch information into. And I'm going to walk you through this. So as I'm doing this, you should be pausing and doing the same. So starting depth is going to be zero. I want it to start at the face of my material, and that's going to be zero. My cut depth. Okay. Remember all the way back in step one, we made these a half inch thick. Well, that's what I needed to cut through. I wanted to cut through a half inch. So if you do not have 0.5, click, type 0.5 in that location right there. Your tool, okay, it should be an end mill. To get a, a half inch or a quarter inch end mill, sorry, you need to hit select. So notice when I hit select, and if I move my face out of the way, it gives you a whole bunch of tools. Here's where you need to have some experience, okay? You guys right now uh, have very little experience. So I'm gonna walk you through this. So end mill, 0.25, that's a quarter of an inch. I wanna select that. And notice when I do, um, when I select that, it brings up all this information here, okay? Do not get overwhelmed, this is really simple. For right now, it should be named end mill, 0.25, so I don't need to select that. Notice it gives me a profile of what that bit is. It's asking or it's telling me the diameter, 0.25, and that's what I want. I'm coming right down here to speeds and feeds. This is really important because if this is not right for the bit we're using, the speed that it is turning and on the material that we're cutting, we are going to break bits. And that is not a good thing. Um, these bits are roughly 40 bucks a pop. So we don't want to uh, be breaking these. Okay, so information here, here's where we need to punch in some specifics. Spindle speed, how fast is that router spinning? We're gonna go with 10,000 RPMs, okay? You're probably going to see maybe 13,000 RPMs. Please change that and type in 10,000 RPMs, okay? We're gonna go with the feed rate, um, inches a second, all right? And what we wanna do is I wanna be in inches a minute and I'm gonna change this to 130. So 130 inches in a minute is what I want it to cut. If I work in inches a second, notice it's going 2.7 inches in one second. Okay. So just change this window either in inches a minute. And if you do that, make it 130. If you go inches a second, it should be 2.17 or you can just go two. That'll work. What I want to do is hit OK here. My plunge rate at 0.25 is fine. Uh, I can go ahead and hit OK. All right. So now I got my end mill set for a quarter of an inch. It's telling me it's doing it in four passes. That is fine. How do I want it to machine? Well, what this is asking you, where do you want it to travel? Do you want it to travel outside of your profile, inside of your profile, or on your profile? We want to be outside. Okay. We want it to be outside. So make sure that is selected. Do a separate last pass. I'm not going to select that. I don't want a separate last pass. I am going to add tabs to the toolpath. So I'm going to select here, edit tabs. And what I want to make sure of is that I'm placing at least one tab on each edge of my. So with my tabs, okay, uh, notice I place them on each edge and end of my board all the way around. All right. And as I scroll down, then the last thing I got to do here is I want to name uh, what it is I'm trying to cut out. Name your profile. Do not just leave it as default profile one. So I type in profile B and C, and then I give it my initials KS. All right. Once all that is done, all these steps that we've run through, um, I'm going to go ahead and calculate this toolpath. And when I do, my screen changes here a little bit, all right? There it shows me the blue outline of what it is I'm going to cut. That looks good, okay? Um, notice this window here has changed, and it's telling me I created a toolpath. And that toolpath is what I named it, Profile B and C KS. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play, and it's going to do a simulation. Notice it cut out my parts.
And you can see I have my tabs in place, cut the arc. It did everything I wanted it to do, okay? The last thing I need to do is I need to do my rabbits, okay? So here we go. I'm going to close this window. I'm going to click back up here. I'll move my face to 2D, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a different toolpath here. So I'm going to deselect my profile. They're done. I'm going to select my rabbits. Holding my shift key down, I'm going to select all of them, all four, and do one toolpath for all four. This is going to be a pocket toolpath. A lot of this information is going to be the same. Start depth is going to be zero. My cut depth is only going to be a quarter of an inch deep, okay? Because I want them to be a quarter. They're going to fit into that quarter inch uh, data we created in our legs. So this should be 0.25. My end mill should be 0.25. And if I select that, I should have a spindle speed of 10,000 RPMs and my feed rate should be the same. So I can hit OK. That is good. I'm going to climb in my cut. That's the direction of how this is going to work. I'm going to have it climb. So that's fine. Uh, and I'm going to scroll all the way down. I am finished. I'm going to change pocket to pocket B. N C K S. Calculate that. Right? There's my profile B and C. Here is now my pocket. I'm going to simulate my pocket run. Okay? And I now create it. I'll try to illustrate it a little better. There you go. There's my rabbit on the ends. All right? I have two toolpaths my profile of my B and C, which is the outer cut. And then I have my pocket cut, which is our rabbit. Okay. And that is the main objective of our lesson to learn how to draw in VCARV our B's and C's, how to create the arc, how to close the vector, how to trim it, um, and then how to do a profile cut and how to do a pocket cut. All right. Uh, if you work along with this video, you should be able to follow this step for step. Again, file, save your work. This should be saving in a folder that you created out in on your desktop called vcarve um and this is the file that you guys are going to upload so i know my desktop is a mess but um if i go to my vcar file if i can find it Right here, apologize. <clears throat> and there it is, B and C mod two. That is what you wanna upload into Canvas, okay? Right there. You should only have one in there, so it'll be a lot easier for you guys. But that is what you want to uh, try to, to get done in this lesson. Thanks for watching.